Guinea was once a pivotal hub in the transatlantic slave trade, exporting enslaved people to the Americas. Hello, welcome to Open Tierra, where today we are immersing ourselves in the vibrant tapestry of Guinea, the West African gem along the Atlantic coast. Guinea is a country steeped in ancient history, boasting a diverse cultural heritage and a landscape that ranges from tropical forests to coastal plains. Situated on the Atlantic coast, Guinea has a total area of around 254,860 square kilometers, making it slightly smaller than the United Kingdom. It shares borders with Guinea-Bissau, Senegal, Mali, Ivory Coast, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Guinea consists of four main geographical regions. The coastal region stretches along the Atlantic coastline and features mangrove swamps, marshes, and lagoons. Moving inland, we find the Futa Jalon Highlands, which contain Guinea's high peaks and major rivers. The savanna region farther inland has plains and hills covered in grassland vegetation. Finally, the forest region in the southeast has dense tropical forests. Major rivers in Guinea include the Niger, Gambia and Senegal rivers. These provide important freshwater resources and transportation routes for the country. Guinea gets its name from the Portuguese word for black people due to its position on West Africa's coast. Guinea has a tropical climate with distinct rainy and dry seasons. The coastal region sees heavy rainfall, while the interior savanna is drier. Temperatures remain hot year-round. In medieval times, Guinea was home to several powerful empires that controlled important trade routes and amassed great wealth. The Ghana Empire, the Mali Empire led by the famous Sundiata Keita, and the Songhai Empire all ruled over portions of present-day Guinea during their peak. Trade items like gold, salt and slaves allowed these kingdoms to prosper. In the 15th century, European powers began exploring West Africa's coast, seeking trading partners and resources. Portuguese sailors reached Guinea and established new trade routes for valuable commodities. However, this marked the beginning of a tragic era as the transatlantic slave trade expanded. Guinea became a key exporter of enslaved people to the Americas under brutal European traders. By the late 19th century, France had colonized much of West Africa, including Guinea. As part of French West Africa, it was exploited for its resources and people to benefit the colonial power. But winds of change were blowing as independence movements gained momentum across Africa. On October 2, 1958, Guinea gained independence from France under the leadership of President Ahmed Sekou Touré. It was the first French colony in Africa to become sovereign, inspiring others to fight for freedom. Touré ruled Guinea for over two decades and implemented socialist policies. However, his regime has been criticized for its authoritarianism and economic failures. After Touré died in 1984, Lansana Conte seized power through a military coup. Conte's rule was marked by political turmoil and a faltering economy. According to the World Bank, Guinea is home to almost 14 million people from diverse ethnic and linguistic groups. The largest ethnic group is the Fulani, making up around 40% of the population. The Fulani are traditionally pastoralists and Muslims. The Malinke are the second largest group at 30% and have historically been traders and farmers. Other major ethnic groups in Guinea include the Susu along the coastal regions and the Loma, Kisi and Konyagui peoples in the forested regions of the southeast. Each group has its own distinct language and cultural practices. The main religions in Guinea are Islam, practiced by over 85% of the population, and Christianity. Most Christians belong to the Roman Catholic Church. 
Some, especially in rural areas, also follow traditional African religions. Given its diverse ethnic makeup, Guinea is home to over 20 indigenous languages. However, French remains the official language dating back to its colonial period. The most widely spoken languages include Fula, Malinke, and Susu. Guinea possesses major mineral resources, including bauxite, iron ore, gold, and diamonds. Mining drives much of its economy, accounting for over 70% of exports. Guinea has over 40 billion tons of bauxite reserves, more than any other country. Bauxite is processed into alumina, a key material for aluminum production. However, mining practices have raised environmental concerns. Despite its mineral wealth, Guinea remains one of the poorest countries in the world. Most Guineans work in subsistence agriculture, growing crops like rice, coffee, pineapples and palm oil. Commercial farming is limited by inadequate infrastructure and financing. Guinea's GDP per capita is around 1,500 US dollars as of 2022, which places it among the poorest countries in the world. Weak infrastructure, political instability and corruption hamper Guinea's economic growth. Electricity access and literacy rates are also very low. Key trade partners include China, the United Arab Emirates and the European Union. But Guinea continues to run large trade deficits due to importing needs. Guinea gained independence from France in 1958 under President Ahmed Sekou Touré. Touré pursued a socialist path aligned with the USSR during the Cold War era. After his passing, Guinea shifted to the United States under subsequent leaders. Strategically located on the Atlantic coast, Guinea has substantial mineral wealth, including bauxite, iron ore and gold. This makes Guinea geopolitically important as foreign powers seek trade and investment opportunities. China has become a major economic partner through infrastructure projects and mining investments. Within West Africa, Guinea is a member of the economic community of West African states. However, Guinea has sometimes had tense relations with its neighbors. In the 1970s, Touré supported rebels in the region, which led to border closures. Guinea still has border disputes with Sierra Leone and Liberia. Domestically, Guinea has suffered from political instability and authoritarian regimes. Current President Alpha Conde amended term limits and won a controversial third term in 2020 amid violent protests. This raised concerns among Western nations. Guinea has a diverse mix of ethnic groups, each with its unique traditions and customs that have shaped the country's cultural fabric. Music and dance play a major role, with styles like djembe drumming and balafon ensembles bringing communities together. Among certain communities, women engage in a striking practice of adorning themselves with decorative lip plates. These plates, inserted into stretched piercings on the lower lip, are more than just ornaments. They're symbols of cultural identity and beauty within the Fulani community. Dini has produced some noteworthy artists, authors and musicians that have become cultural icons. Writer and political activist Jibril Tamsir Niane is famous for his novel Sundiata about the Mali Empire hero. The band Bembeya Jazz brought international recognition to modern Guinean music. Guinean cuisine is influenced by the various ethnic groups that call the country home, each contributing their own native ingredients, flavors and cooking techniques. From hearty stews to savory street snacks, Guinea's culinary culture reflects the diversity of its people. Yetis is a hearty beef or lamb stew flavored with peanut butter for richness. Chunks of meat simmer in a thick spicy peanut sauce served over rice or root vegetables. It's a classic Guinean comfort food. Ketun is a stew with yam and fish 
that is dried and often fried or smoked before eating. The pungent, salty fish is a popular source of protein paired with starchy staples like rice or cassava. For a delicious one-pot meal, there's burake with rice. This consists of beef, vegetables and spices cooked in palm oil served over a bed of aromatic rice. Simple, but packed with flavor. Finally, no Guinean meal is complete without the dual staples of lachiri and kosan. Lachiri is made of mashed plantains formed into balls, while kosan consists of firm steamed cassava cubes. They make the perfect accompaniment to sauces and stews. These iconic national dishes showcase the best of Guinean culinary culture with a unique blend of native and foreign influences. Let me know in the comments which Guinean dish you would love to try first. If you enjoyed this video on Guinea, you'll love this next one.